Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math curriculum, commonly known as STEM, was first introduced to the American education system as an effort to strengthen the dwindling American economy in 2009. This transition occurred in light of former President Obama's initiative called Educate to Innovate, which called on the nation to rapidly increase the emphasis of education on STEM fields to hoist the United States to the top of the pack as a world leader in these crucial areas of scientific and technological innovation. However, the shift in educational value to that of the STEM fields has resulted in a major implication for American society. There exists a large barrier in the culture of the United States where the arts have become mutually exclusive to the sciences, creating a culture unable to view the arts, creativity, and imagination as intrinsically valuable in the process of generating scientific knowledge. However, it is said that to be creative requires divergent thinking, which is arguably a necessary critical thinking skill required in large part by the science disciplines. Therefore, Research is beginning to support the hypothesis that the integration of the arts into the sciences is far more beneficial for students as compared to a STEM-only curriculum. Arts, or rather creativity, and intelligence have been historically linked within culture. However, today we see an unlinking of these fields of thought in the wake of the STEM revolution in the United States. Arts and education are often viewed as excessive or non-essential in comparison to the study of science and technologies. However, is separating, or worse, valuing the sciences far above the arts and humanities truly the path leading to success in terms of American innovation, entrepreneurship, leadership, and achievement? Well, let's take a look. There is a phenomenon called the Flynn Effect. It describes a generational trend seen in the United States in which, with each passing generation since the inception of the IQ test, there has been an average of a 10-point increase in IQ in the American population. However, a similar reverse trend has been seen in something called a CQ score, which is a measure of the ability to think creatively. Interestingly, researchers have found a correlation between IQ and CQ scores and something they coined lifetime creative accomplishment, meaning students growing up to become entrepreneurs, inventors, college presidents, authors, doctors, diplomats, and software developers. In their study, CQ scores were more than three times as likely to predict a student's lifetime creative accomplishment than IQ scores were. On top of this, a poll conducted by IBM surveyed CEOs of various companies asking what leadership competencies they sought for in potential employees. 1,500 of the CEOs surveyed identified creativity as their first choice. Along this same line of reasoning, in another study, researchers found a trend in a cohort of students who graduated from Michigan State University's Honors Program between the years 1990 and 1995. They found that exposure to arts correlated with this cohort's high achievement later in life. For example, graduates who, later in life, filed a patent or owned their own business had eight times the exposure to arts as children than the general public. Researchers concluded that this correlation could come from the ability to innovate and think divergently, fostered by the arts and creativity. In light of the seeming insufficiencies of the STEM movement being an inadequate at best and detrimental at worst strategy to push America's students to the top of world leadership, a new movement has been born. Creators call it STEAM, adding an A to the traditional STEM acronym to include the arts and humanities. According to researchers, STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, may be defined as a transdisciplinary approach to education that emphasizes problem solving. STEAM seeks to increase how students travel across and between disciplines, seeing and forming connections between them to foster critical thinking and problem solving skills that reach beyond a single area of practice. Connections between the arts and the sciences is perhaps not as radical as many people may think. For example, visualizations in science are everywhere. From graphs to diagrams, flowcharts to photographs, scientists both make discoveries based on interpretation of visual representations and communicate their findings in visual formats. However, in the science classroom, Students aren't often asked to create their own visual representations. Usually, they are asked to interpret others. 
Ainsworth and colleagues in their article titled Drawing to Learn in Science argues that learning requires an ability to interpret visual information. Likewise, the ability to represent information visually is critical for becoming a skilled student in science. For example, to be a proficient scientist, one must learn skills like sketching the field of view of a microscope, drawing a graphical representation, or creating a diagram that explains a scientific phenomenon. In this way, drawing helps students learn how to represent science. Asking students to explain what they drew, justify their model, or evaluate one's depiction compared to another tasks students with the challenge of first, understanding the, the scientific phenomenon occurring, deciding how to best represent that phenomenon visually, and learning how to explain their scientific representation in words or in writing. Use of the arts within science context connects strongly to the universal design for learning. In this model, multiple modes of representation and multiple means of expression fall easily within a visual and artistic context. In this way, in, in contrast to written or oral summaries, the use of the, the arts as information modality in science allows also for differentiation, in particular for students who are at risk. For example, a study conducted by Hartle and Gordon found that Arts integrated instruction offers an alternative and more effective avenue for at-risk students to access and learn information as compared to traditional approaches. Using the arts as a mean to both access information and express one's understanding is an inherently diverse and differentiated means of teaching and learning. Research that demonstrates the specific effects of arts integration curriculum or STEAM implementation in the schools is currently sparse but some evidence does exist that bolsters the STEAM movement's claim of increasing the educational achievement of students across the board. For example, amidst controversies that adding the arts to STEM curriculum would weaken learning outcomes, one study sought to address this claim by examining upper elementary physical science. This large study included several thousand students from primarily low income and highly ethnically diverse communities. Researchers hypothesized that integration of the arts in physical science would be a developmentally appropriate and powerful means for envisioning phenomena the students cannot directly observe. Piaget might describe this as making something abstract more concrete for adolescents who are only beginning to learn how to think in the abstract. By measuring the difference in benchmark testing across one year of implementation compared to the previous year of non-intervention, researchers found a greater improvement on benchmark assessments as compared to students who participated in a more traditional curriculum. To explain this, the authors point to the predominant issue in young adolescent science learning in that science concepts can be very abstract, while young adolescents remain concrete thinkers. Because of this, for most adolescents, Concrete thinking tools like drawing, kinesthetic movement, creative writing, and dramatic presentations can be powerful tools in the hands of concrete thinkers. These are developmentally appropriate means by which students at this age ought to learn and make sense of information. Although a great deal more research needs to be done to help solidify the connection between student outcomes and arts integration in the science, Early researchers are still finding that perhaps after all there is some truth when Albert Einstein said, the greatest scientists are artists as well. <laughs>